In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the capabilities of the Azure Data Factory plugin extension. The plugin extension uses the Azure Data Factory public REST APIs to run and monitor Azure Data Factory pipeline jobs. So to demonstrate these capabilities, I'm going to use two different jobs. The first job here will actually run a pipeline without parameters. So this job is defined as follows. So here you'll have the uh, parameters that are necessary to run the job. The first one is the ADF endpoint. The next one is the OAuth security endpoint. Next one here is the client secret. I mean the client ID followed by the client secret. This is a resource. This is your subscription ID. This is the resource group name. This is the factory. And then this here is the actual pipeline. And the following parameters below here are used to control the polling interval of, of verifying the status of the job. So this first one here is the number of retries, which is 99. This is the sleep interval between each retry. This one here is a failure interval. So the failure interval allows for a period of time when the APIs provided by Azure are unavailable, either due to maintenance or temporary downtime or hiccups in the networking. So this will allow it to recover uh, in a certain amount of seconds. And the last one here is the log level of how much detail you'll actually see in this pool file. So for this particular example, I'm using the copy pipeline uh, ADF uh, job. So if you look over here in the ADF environment, you will see that I have a copy pipeline job. And this is a simple one activity pipeline which has no parameters. So when I execute the job, we will see it start executing in the monitor. So we will see a, an entry show up here that shows it running. So I will start the job. You should see an entry show up. So the job is now running. So the job will stay in running status until it completes on the ADF side. So once this goes to completion, here and this job is completed. So we can use a quick view to get some details about the job. So here is the job execution. It shows it ran. Um, this is the current time that it ran. And if I look at the spool file, we can see a little bit more details about the execution of how it ran. So the first few lines are uh, some of the parameters that were passed. Um, and then this here is the actual run ID of the job. So this job run ID ends in CA769. And we can correlate that with the job that actually ran here on ADF pipeline that executed, which it should be this one. And here you'll see the run ID CA769, which is the same run ID as what's shown in offices. The next job that I'm going to show is basically the same thing as the first one, except the only difference is that it actually accepts parameters. So here you'll see that I'm passing in some parameters. So I'm passing in a parameter called URL and another parameter called URL1. And this is the uh, pipeline job that I'm running here, pipeline two parameters. So if I switch over to ADF, I can see that particular job. So this is my pipeline two parameters. You'll see it takes two parameters here, URL and URL one. And you'll see that these are used within these activities. So the first one uses the URL and the second activity here uses URL one. So, you know, same thing as before. When I execute this, we will see um, a job executing over here. So I will kick this job off. Now it's running. Here, you'll see that it's currently running right now. So once this completes, we should see it also go to completion over here. So. Now it's been completed, and we can do the exact same thing as before, where we can view the spool.
and here you see the execution again. And here's the uh, run ID again. It's C242. Uh, we can compare that over here. And you'll see it's C242 again here. And it shows that the two steps have completed here as well. Uh, the last one I have here is um, an example of what happens if the job fails. So in this particular job, I purposely created an error. So I, I changed the second parameter to be URL2. So this URL2 is not a valid parameter because the, uh, the second activity is actually looking for URL1. So when I run this job, it will actually fail. So I'm going to kick this job off. It fails pretty quickly. So. So here you see it failed. And um, so in Autosys, it also ends up you know, eventually going to a failure status. So it goes to the failure status. And if I open it up the spool file, we can kind of get a little bit of information about the details of the job failing. So here you'll see the failure 208. I open up this job spool. Here you'll see the execution, and here you'll see you know the parameters that were passed. Um, this is the run ID again, so it's uh, 64 F6, which should match this one that failed over here. You see 64 F6. Uh, this one failed in you know you know it failed in Web 2. So in here on the quick view screen, and uh, here you see that the job started running. And eventually, it got to a point where it detected the failure. So here, job failed, operation on target web 2, missing URL. So, so this is the failure that was reported back. And it, it matches what happened here, because it did fail in web 2 was the activity name. So that is the capabilities of the Azure Data Factory uh, plugin extension.